Hi and welcome back to my channel. This is Rhea, your study buddy for hematology. And today we are going to talk about folic acid deficiency. And let's go. So what are sources of folic acid? Sources of folic acid are found in leafy greens. So instead of like in vitamin B12, you need meat and fish and dairy products. For folic acid, it's completely the opposite. <laughs> so you need leafy greens for this and it's found in fruits, also in dairy products, cereals, and also in animal foods such as liver and kidney. But the highest concentration is in leafy greens. Our daily diet contains about 400 to 600 micrograms of folate. So the thing is, folic acid deficiency during the first trimester of a pregnancy can cause renal tube defects, paralysis, and brain damage. And that is why it's so important for pregnant women to have folic acid in their body and so what is folic acid deficiency one of the main causes of megaloblastic anemia is folic acid deficiency um, its symptoms its clinical symptoms is similar to vitamin b12 which i have covered earlier um, in a different video and um, the main difference though is that it doesn't affect your CNS, your central nervous system. It doesn't have neurological involvement. And so there is a decreased intake in diet, which is the main cause of the deficiency. So eat your greens. <laughs> I'm one to say, but I don't eat greens either. And so I make smoothies, okay? If there's a will, there's a way. What I do so that I can have greens inside my body is that I make green smoothies and that's the only way I can take them without overcooking them is by making them into a drink. And I find that manageable and delicious, so it worked out for me. There's also malabsorption, there's increased requirements such as pregnancy and drug-induced folate deficiency. So if you took drugs that block folate or folic acid, um, absorption then that that can be an issue as well so a little review about folic acid deficiency and what happens to your body so if you don't have folic acid in your body you are compromising the synthesis of thymidine triphosphate which is needed for DNA synthesis so if you have a decrease in thymidine triphosphate you end up having a defective DNA synthesis because instead of having thymidine, you have this other guy which is called deoxyuridine triphosphate or DUTP that attaches to your DNA instead of TTP. And so when that happens, you have a defective DNA because that's not the right code. And so you end up with nuclear fragmentation and ultimately, um, immature cells die in the marrow and they don't really make it to the peripheral blood. So peripheral blood. The peripheral blood picture of folic acid deficiency is just the same as in vitamin B12 deficiency. And so MCV is greater than 100. You have macro ovalocytes. There's an increase in erythrocyte precursors in the bone marrow. There's a decrease in RBC release into the peripheral blood because again, they have defective maturation because they have defective DNA. And then there's a decrease in reticulocytes. There's an increase in RDW and anisocytosis, pancytopenic, how jolly bodies, basophilic stippling, cabot rings, megaloblastic NRBCs, and hypersegmented neutrophils. Or having lobes of more than five. And so this is how they look like. So lab tests. Lab tests for folic acid is the serum and red cell folate and the normal range is from 5 to 16 nanograms per ml okay and then there's serum hemocysteine as well so what's the treatment for folic acid deficiency so for a folic acid deficiency there's a therapeutic dose that is given um, one to five milligrams per day for two to three weeks given orally they can also give you folic acid and vitamin B12 at the same time because there are cases where they don't really know what the cause of the megaloblastic anemia is. And so to help with that, they give you both at the same time. 
And if you can't take the oral medication, there's also an injection. So response to therapy for folic acid deficiency, the response for this is that the first sign is there is an increase in reticulocytes three to five days after therapy, exactly the same as the vitamin B12 deficiency. So there's megaloblastic morphology of bone marrow disappearing within 24 to 48 hours. There's giant metamelocytes and hypersegmented neutrophils disappearing within two weeks of therapy. So the response is pretty fast. And so now we're gonna talk about macrocytic non-megaloblastic anemias. So for macrocytic non-megaloblastic anemias, the MCV is greater than 100, but not more than 110. So it's big, but not that big. And then the RBCs are round, and they're not macroobalocytes. They're, they're still round, but they're just bigger. And then the neutrophils are not hypersegmented. So the cause for macrocytic non-megaloblastic anemia is actually liver disease and alcoholism. So, macrocytosis is seen in 40 to 96% of alcoholics, and megaloblastic changes are in 20 to 40% of alcoholics. So, take it easy, drink moderately, because <laughs> you could have macrocytic non megaloblastic anemia which is just one of the many things that you could get if you get into alcoholism. So take it easy. You can drink, but not that much, okay? Everything in moderation. And then lastly, let's talk about vitamin-independent megaloblastic anemia. So vitamin-independent megaloblastic anemia. It's not about folic acid and vitamin B12 deficiency, but it is a megaloblastic anemia. So what are these? It could be an inherited problem. There's actually a lot of these, but two of them are the erotic aciduria, which is an inherited increase of erotic acid in the urine. And there's the lesch nihan syndrome, which is an inherited purine metabolism. So these things can also cause megaloblastic anemia and then there's acquired so it's like a an effect of having myelodysplastic syndrome you can have megaloblastic anemia as a secondary problem to that and erythral leukemia as well it's also one of the reasons that you get vitamin independent megaloblastic anemia and then lastly there's a drug and toxin induced vitamin independent megaloblastic anemia and these drugs are from methotrexate, hydroxyurea, and aminoterin. So these three drugs actually decrease your thymidine synthesis and therefore affects DNA synthesis and therefore gives you megaloblastic anemia. And that's that! Huh. So that went pretty quickly and that's the part two of our megaloblastic anemia series. I think that I've covered everything that I have to cover for megaloblastic anemia. And so the next chapter will be about aplastic anemias. And in between these videos, I'm probably going to publish, you know, filler videos just for me to prepare thoroughly on the next things that I want to publish. And I hope that these videos continue to help people that are trying to learn hematology. And if you're one of them, please do like and subscribe. Thank you for watching today and I hope you have a great day. Bye.